Toronto could win the title, and he still would probably go to LA. Magic swung and missed on oh, this. No, no, no. This will go down as his first big mistake. I would stop trying to rely on Tiger's heroics. This morning, the story comes out. Yeah, he's kind of warming to the idea of playing in Toronto. It's overnight. He slept on it. Had a nice steak last night. Baked potato woke up. I love Canada. Really? This is a guy that wants a major shoe deal. Unless he's trying to get a snow shoe deal, he's not getting it in Toronto. Okay, he doesn't love Toronto. Here's why that story's coming out. Because Kawhi Leonard, and he's right, needs to protect his reputation. If Masai just so much as gets an audience with Kawhi Leonard, I think Kawhi will start coming around to Toronto. And if Kawhi gives Toronto a chance, I would give Toronto a 50-50 chance. Masai and Drake, do not exclude Drake from this equation because he's very, he, you want to talk about powers of persuasion? He, he is a, a, a huge, he's a much bigger star than Kawhi Leonard ever thought about being. Yeah, okay. and, and if he gets an audience with Kawhi or vice versa, yeah. It, it'll start to cook. I believe he'll play. I do not believe Kawhi would run the risk of sitting out. But I do believe at some point in time, he'll find his way out of Toronto by the trade deadline because I do not believe that he'll come back. He'll be re-signing with Toronto. Mm -hmm. Now, I know the uh, general manager, uh, Masai Ujiri, mm -hmm. is going to put the full court press on. Mm -hmm. We're going to build the team around mm -hmm. you. We love you. The city, you know, Toronto's going to embrace you, all that, yada, yada. Kawhi's heard that spiel. If I'm Kawhi Leonard and if I love the game, mm -hmm. then I, yeah, I don't want to go to Toronto. I want to be in LA. But you know what? I'm dying to play next year. I've already sat out a year. And even though I don't want to go to Toronto, I'm like, I'm going to the East. I can show who I am. Right. Everybody gave LeBron props for dominating the East. I can dominate the East just as much as him. We can win the East and take our chances in the fight. Like, that should be his mentality. I know for a fact no one is telling Kawhi to sit out the season. People have said that, all these rumors, reports, but I talked to Kawhi, it's people, and that's not even part of the conversation, him sitting out. So I don't know why people are talking about it, because typically people aren't informed. So even that information is not coming from Kawhi's camp. I believe Kawhi and his folks were trying to exert maximum leverage to get what they wanted which was a trade to the city of Los Angeles. But once that doesn't happen, then you have to have the conversation. All right, how far are we actually going Willing to take to this? It's one thing to put out there, hey, you can trade for me, I might not show up. It's another thing to be traded. For. Kawhi needs to speak. Kawhi needs to have a press conference. Kawhi needs to do a sit-down interview. He needs to stop Say something. letting his representatives whisper in the ear of reporters and, and put this stuff out there. I think some of his representatives, which include a family member, are doing him kind of a disservice right now by creating this narrative. Magic swung and missed no, on this. No, no, no. This will go down as his first big mistake because you need to maximize the years that you have, the quote unquote best player on the planet, LeBron James, who will enter his 16th year, He's not going to get any younger in his 16th year or his 17th or his 18th. You might as well max it out. You got He knocked on your door and said, I want to finish as a Laker. Right. Well, then, th then make it happen. Magic say, look, that is depth. If we get rid of these three guys, that's three guys. Okay, granted, you brought Rondo, you brought Stevenson, and you brought JaVale McGee in. But that's now you're only you're down eight, nine players, Skip. You gotta have 12 to fill out a roster. If you're magic in that situation, what are you willing to give up? When you know I'm gonna get him in a few months. Now you could say if we get him now, maybe we can yeah, win. Yeah, yeah. But how much you gonna give up? See, I think if you're magic, the only way you give up some of those young guys is if they don't play well. If you say, you know what, Brandon Ingram hasn't played well next to LeBron, he doesn't like the big stage, Kuzma's not what we thought. But then if you're Toronto, why do I want them? At the trading deadline, if, if Toronto's in fourth place and you don't feel it, you want to get nothing or something. Because yep. this guy is a good drafter. He was executive of the year in Denver. And Brandon Ingram, if you let Brandon Ingram have some space, he's going to give you 19 a game. Yep. I don't think a deal's going to be done. I don't think it's going to get close to being done because I think this for this season is going to work out 
beautifully for Toronto. I think Toronto now, with that Danny Green was thrown into the trade as an expiring contract, he will be the starting two guard for the Raptors. I think a lineup of Lowry, Green, Kawhi, Abaka, who I don't have a ton of faith in, and Balanchunas, plus the fully formed bench unit that we talked about last year, mm -hmm. I think that is a dangerous team. They can kind of trick their fans to think, yeah, we're still competing for a championship. We can make that appearance in the final that we've never made. But after this, I mean, they're going to blow that thing up. They got other people coming off the books and, and everything for next year. Yes, I think Kawhi and his group still know that a trade can be made. They know there's a certain amount of time that has to pass before a trade can be made. But yes, a deal can still be done. If I'm the Lakers and it looks like it's deteriorating in Toronto, I would make a move. I wouldn't put Brandon Ingram on the table in a, in a half-season type of deal because you would have Toronto's backs against the wall. But yes, I would go and make a move to try to get Kawhi Leonard. All that being said, I don't think the Raptors deal him. I, I think they're all in on Kawhi Leonard this year. And if it doesn't work out, they'll do something that they've been thinking about doing since 2013. Rip it down. Which is rip it down. It's always reasonable for him to make the cut and everything. We can't okay. take that for granted. It's still an accomplishment to get to the weekend. I think a top 10 finish because the way he's playing golf, the way he's striking the ball, is he one of the best players in the world now? No, I wouldn't say he's in the top 10 players in the world, but these types of golf course, these types of tournaments, a, a top 10 finish for him, that would be a major accomplishment given what he's done this season also in, in the majors. Given how you've always said Tiger would tell you and has told anybody that, that was close to him, he still gets nervous for the first hole of every tournament, much less major tournaments. And we saw how his U.S. Open started. It was a triple bogey on the first hole of the tournament where he just, it was a great tee shot, and then he just made a mess of it after that. I, Tiger having being even par through the front nine, I would say today, could put him in position to be two or three under after the first round. And I, I mean, I don't think that would be too far back. I would stop trying to rely on Tiger's heroics. I would stop trying to rely on him shooting a 63, 64. To be able to win these tournaments, you need to consistently shoot 66, 67. And you can't catch up with these young guys. There's too much power. There's too many guys that can shoot scores under par. And there's too many guys, they're not playing for par. They're trying to make birdie so you it's that's a long way to build a comeback in a major